There was a major succession at the world's fourth largest automaker, Hyundai Motor Group, group this month. Chong Yi-sun took over as the chairman of the South Korean Auto Group as his father, Chong Mung, was stepped down after 20 years in the company. The, ran the appointment wasn't random though, as you can see on the screen, the 50-year-old heir apparent has been with the company for over two decades and has been behind the workings of Hyundai's procurement and sales businesses. He's virtually been running the company as executive vice chairman since 2018, representing the firm in major events and even delivering the group's key visions and policies. And now that he's officially chairman, he bears the full responsibility of the massive Tebo company, with assets worth more than $206 billion with 54 affiliate companies. Now, can Chong Yi-sun continue his family legacy? That is the question. And to discuss this, I have joining me today, Dr. J.R. Reagan, CEO of Idea Explorer Global, joining us from Taejeon. It's good to see you again. Thank you. We also connect with John A. Quelch, Dean of the University of Miami's Herbert Business School. It's always great to have you on the, sh on the show, sir. Thank you. Well, Dr. Reagan, let's start with you. Now, Tong Yizan has effectively been running the company for two years. But what challenges do you think he faces as he officially takes over the company this month? Um, last well, this month, as so. you say, he, he's been the de facto uh, chairman for a while, so there won't be any big management changes per se. I think, though, if you look at some of the uh, other big tables in Korea, the other big companies in Korea, namely Samsung, uh, the thing that they have been really struggling with is uh, is governance and, and transparency of corporate governance. And I think that's the same thing that uh, is going to be uh, happening here. Um, there's been some suggest some suggestions and and uh, and and looking at the the future governance model that may divide ownership and management rights. Though here in Korea, there has been some struggling that maybe there ought to be some split between the ownership and management and that legacy that keeps getting handed down from uh, from father to son and in the family so much, and even to the point where. Um, other companies have started to look at other models around the world, like the Wallenberg family in Sweden that controls roughly a third of their GDP and has split the management and ownership rights, even though it's uh, been so impactful on the Swedish economy. And Dr. Crouch, now getting to you, what, what are your thoughts on this uh, leadership handover from father to son? I mean, what kind of challenges do you think Tong Yizan will have to face as now the official face of the company? And um, what do you think Hyundai could learn from other conglomerates like Samsung, which hasn't exactly had the smoothest transition process? Well, I think uh, here, as uh, uh, Mr. Reagan uh, pointed out, we have a very smooth and well orchestrated transition. Um, the father to son element of it is interesting, but frankly, uh, we're talking here about uh, two uh, excellent professionals. And um, uh, the uh, Chairman Chung, the new Chairman Chung, has been extremely well groomed and uh, practiced across many different elements of the company's administration. So I, I expect it to be uh, a pretty seamless transition. I think in these kind of circumstances, what is often very important is that the departing chairman uh, stand back from day-to-day -day operations uh, and does not permit um, individuals who are long-serving senior officials at the company uh, to end run uh, the new chairman uh, if they have any concerns. If they have concerns, they should uh, take them to the new chairman, uh, and uh, the uh, outgoing chairman should never uh, play uh, the CEO role again, uh, should always be careful to uh, not get in the way or in any sense undercut the authority of the, uh, the new chairman. So really the company, it's all his now and he'll be um, putting his mark on that company. And well, Chong says that he plans to foster a company culture that, which he says would respect communication and autonomy. And of course, Hyundai is known for its rather rigid and top-down culture, even in departments like design in the uh, Hyundai Motor uh, business. And well, Dr. Reagan, how crucial do you think is a culture change to innovation and in going forward? And do you think Chong Yizong will be capable of pushing this through? 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting because the big table, the big companies uh, like Hyundai have succeeded from that high R&D intensity in Korea, the top-down innovation that's historically come from a close linkage between companies and government and, and, and academia. He's really got to change this to more of a bottoms-up uh, innovation culture, which is very difficult uh, given the legacy uh, of the company for so long. But it's going to be necessary, I think, in order for him to achieve the things that he wants to, de to do in terms of introducing technology and making it more modern over time. And that really speaks to being almost a technology company. Uh, and if you look at Silicon Valley and innovation uh, that happens there, things like freedom to experiment and equity in the company and, and the flat uh, hierarchical structure. Those are things that uh, he's going to have to introduce and it's going to be very difficult. But we've seen other examples like SK in Korea that have started to do that as well. And, and uh, I think that's going to be necessary for him to achieve the things that he wants to achieve. Well, I think that's a very interesting point you made there because, of course, yes, like you said, in Silicon Valley, we see CEOs who have engineering backgrounds and they're basically scientists who have turned into businessmen. But here in Asia, East Asia, we have, you know, family-owned businesses, uh, CEOs with management backgrounds. So, Dr. Koch, how, um, how important do you think is a culture change to innovation? Well, I think, uh, first of all, you have to be disciplined to be creative. Um, Creativity is not a matter of uh, uh, a kind of informal flow of ideas. It's not a matter of uh, everybody uh, um, doing their own thing. You have to have discipline. You have to have a strategy that provides a sense of direction around which you can innovate and uh, uh, occasionally even improvise. And so I think the culture change is important uh, but it's important uh, not to lose the essence of what has made uh, this company and many other Korean companies uh, the great global competitors that they are. They are disciplined companies. Um, yes, they are uh, hierarchical and perhaps more hierarchical than companies, for example, in the United States. But that's a reflection of uh, uh, culture. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be less innovative. What you have to have, regardless of the nature of the decision making these days, is rapid decision making. Uh, speed is essential. And you can have very speedy decision making in a top down environment if everybody trusts each other and knows each other. Uh, and that, therefore, can still occur uh, without you having to flatten everything out uh, and become a U.S. style corporation. So I believe that um, Hyundai will be able to uh, accelerate its innovation. Uh, and um, what it has to do to do that, of course, is, as we've heard already, partnerships. Partnership is essential in this field if you are not the do largest dominant world player in order to be able to uh, leverage the assets and capabilities others have complementing your own and thereby uh, accelerating the speed with which you can innovate. And in terms of uh, bringing that to the table, instead, in terms of having a strategy for innovation, well, Dr. Reagan, Hyundai plans to invest nearly $20 billion in battery, hydrogen and autonomous vehicles. And of course, at CES this year, we saw flying taxis as well, um, trying to collaborate with uh, the likes of Uber Technologies. How essential do you think is the future mobility market to traditional automakers like Hyundai? And what do you think the company's strengths and weaknesses are? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, if you look at Hyundai and in 2014, it really uh, discounted, it really dismissed the electric vehicle market. And now it sees that it's playing catch up. Uh, it's about one tenth of the value of uh, Tesla, for example. So it really sees that it's, it's competitive out there. The automobile uh, industry has gotten competitive around technology and around environmental uh, issues. And so uh, having the electronic vehicle technology is expensive, but it, it's going to need to invest there more uh, than it has in the past. And it has dreams, it has desires on the hydrogen 
uh, industry as well. I think both of those go hand in hand. That really needs to uh, speed up more on the electric side of things. Uh, fortunately, it has uh, it has invested more there, and there is a big push in Korea around electronic uh, electric vehicles as well as batteries. Uh, three of the largest battery companies are here, and it's partnered with all of those. So uh, it has designs on uh, leading and uh, becoming the third largest uh, vehicle maker in the world, and namely around that strategy of technology and environmental. Uh, and But it is playing catch up and it sees the, the value in the market uh, because of that. And Dr. Reagan, well, Jung Yi-seon, he's already been meeting with the executives of uh, other conglomerates like Samsung, SK and LG in the past couple of months. And he's really been seeking to form an alliance in the supply of electric car batteries. Are you optimistic about the potential collaborations that we could see in EV batteries and maybe other electronic components and uh, displays? Yeah, it's, it's early days on batteries and, and you see lots of announcements on those. Um, there is a lot of progress in a very short amount of time, though, and we see even out of academia here in Korea and other places, n new advancements almost on a monthly basis for batteries. It's going to be necessary uh, that batteries start to replace the carbon-based fuels, and there is, as I mentioned before, a high R&D intensity in Korea, particularly with those companies like LG and Samsung and SK for the batteries, so the, the partnerships are going to work well for that. I think it also needs, though, that technology component. Uh, you know, cars are being valued for the technology uh, that they have within them. They're not just utility vehicles anymore. So I think it's it's alliances with uh, Samsung and other places to get the technology is, is going to be useful. Well, right now it is doing quite well for itself in the world, Dr. Quelch. Right now, Hyundai is the fourth um, largest automaker in the world. and. But then it comes uh, 36 in terms of brand power among global companies. What do you think the uh, company's main strategy should be in order to boost its brand power and competitiveness? Well, f first, let me just say that I think um, um, what we need to do is just note that among the global brands that are ranked in the uh, 2020 Interbrand Most Powerful Brands list, um, there are actually only four auto companies that are ahead of uh, Hyundai. So although it's uh, number four in uh, vehicle production, it's actually number five in uh, ranking among auto companies. So the companies that are ahead of uh, uh, Hyundai would be Toyota, Mercedes, BMW, uh, and um, Honda. Uh, those four companies are ahead. If you go back five years, uh, in this global brand power ranking. Um, five years ago, Nissan and uh, VW were ahead of uh, Hyundai. Now they are behind. So Hyundai is doing pretty well, it seems to me, with respect to uh, brand power. Um, what it has to do to uh, further advance itself is uh, do what it is doing, which is uh, aggressive and heavy R&D investment uh, an aggressive uh, cultivation of partnerships and a focus on consumer centricity uh, with uh, particular emphasis on innovation that is going to uh, add perceptible value uh, to its target consumers, uh, but at affordable prices. Uh, because Tesla may well be strong, it is the number 40th uh, ranked brand and brand power on this ranking that you're referring to where Hyundai is 36th. But Tesla is really attempting to come at this market uh, from the point of view of the Mercedes of the uh, electric vehicle market. It's not attempting to come at the market uh, as the Hyundai or the uh, Toyota of the market. And so there is, I think, a great opportunity here for uh, Hyundai uh, to certainly take on Honda and beat Honda and uh, maybe challenge uh, Toyota uh, in what might be called more the value end of the market as opposed to the premium priced end of the market. And Dr. Reagan, it's not just Honda, but other South Korean turbos like, um, like 
Samsung, SK, um, they've been transitioning to a new generation of leaders. And well, now the heads of the country's four largest conglomerates are under the age of 60, as you can see here on the screen. And, but of course, we have to remember that these firms dominate the South Korean economy with their products, services, exports, and they employ together over 668,000 people. What do you think or hope that these young leaders will bring to the table? Well, I hope that they see that the, you know, the they really are the future of Korea, uh, but in a different way. Not just to be a central part of the GDP like they have in the past, but to help create a new generation of uh, leaders and in that uh, small and medium business segment in startups. Now, they're doing a lot more in that area. Almost every one of those companies that you mentioned has a startup. Uh, engine even inside of the company and this trying and the government is now incenting those big uh, chaebol companies to create more startups it's going to be necessary i think because uh, it's just too big uh, it's too big to fail almost for these companies and they need to create an engine and complementary ecosystem to go along with the products that it has so i think it has a leadership position on creating more growth and doing that through small and medium businesses and startups. All right, these are just basically empires that we're talking about. And as you said, hopefully we'll see small innovation and this all trickling down to the smaller, medium-sized businesses as well. Well, that was Dr. J.R. Reagan, CEO of IDEO Explorer Global, joining us from Tedon, and Dr. John A. Quelch, Dean of the University of Miami's Herbert Business School, joining us from Miami. Thank you both so much for your incredible insights today. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day or evening wherever you are. Goodbye.